Hey, it's me again. Today we are going to be talking about streaming algorithms, and specifically we will only be talking about two streaming algorithms because we don't have time. There will be reservoir sampling and bloom filters. So reservoir sampling, we start with the question of how do you pick a random element from an array? Let's say your array had 10 elements. How would you select a random element from it? Well, one thing you could do is you could choose a random integer, which is your index, into your array, and you can pick an element at that index. But what would happen if you wanted to generalize this to an infinite stream of elements? How do you pick s random elements from an infinite stream of elements? And I guess the first question is, what exactly does this mean? What is the input? What is the output? When do you give the output? And the answer is, at any given point in the stream, you should be able to give an output. You should be able to output an answer. You should be able to output an answer whether you've seen five elements or whether you've seen 50 elements or 50 million elements. And specifically, what you do is you maintain a set of s elements, and every time a new element is added to the stream, you may or may not update this set of elements. And this set of elements must have the guarantee that at any given point in the stream, Every element that has been seen so far should be equally likely to be in this set of s elements. So how do we do this? Well, we start by saving the first s elements, and then, well, we might replace them later. And suppose we have seen the first n minus 1 elements, and now we are seeing the nth element. What you do is you either keep the nth element or you discard the nth element. So you keep the nth element with probability s over n, and then you select one at random to replace, to kick out. And otherwise, you discard it. And it turns out that you can prove by induction that after n elements, it satisfies the guarantee we want. Every element that you've seen so far is equally likely to be in the stream. So that is reservoir sampling. And what are bloom filters? So the idea with bloom filters is you have like a long stream of elements and you want to see if there are like any duplicates. So let's say you have a stream of ads and you want to make sure a user does not see the same ad multiple times. So what is the naive way of doing this? You could store all the ads in a hash table. Unfortunately, this takes almost as much space as there are ads because like you would just stuff every ad into the hash table or the hash set and then your hash set would just grow bigger and bigger until it explodes. So what happens if we want to use a very small amount of memory, say like 100 slots or 1,000 slots? Then, then what you can do is you can have a bit array, an array that is either 0 or 1 everywhere. And your bit array is going to have like 100 entries or maybe 1,000 entries. And you want to initialize it to all zeros. And in addition to this bit array, you have this hash function. Your hash function is going to hash the ads to the numbers like 0 to 99 or something. It's going to assign one number to each of these ads, and it's going to be, there's going to be as many possible buckets as there are indices in the bit array. So what you do is, what, when you see an ad, you hash the ad to one of these numbers from 0 to 99, like let's say you hash it to bucket 79, and then you set the corresponding position in the bit array to be 1. So what do you do after that? Now, what happens when you want to check whether an ad has been seen? Well, what you do is instead of like having this huge hash table, you just look at the position in the bit array. So let's say the ad hashes the bucket number 79, this new ad hashes the bucket number 79, then if the position 79 in the bit array is zero, then you know for sure the ad has not been seen. Because if the ad had been seen, we would have set that position in the bit array to be one. However, if the entry in the bit array is one, then there are two possibilities. One possibility is that we've seen the ad, and that's why we set that bit to one. And another possibility is that we saw a different ad that happened to hash, also hash to 79. So that would be a false positive. This bloom filter idea has no false negatives, but could potentially have false positives. And how do we deal with false positives? Well, what we do is we have multiple hash functions, and we have to make sure all of the bits corresponding to all of the hash functions are all set to one. And that is our way of reducing false positives while still maintaining no false negatives.